So if you've been paying even a little bit of attention lately, then you've probably noticed that there's been a lot of talk about these things, Stanley Cups. People are camping outside of Targets at 5 a.m. for them. People are selling them on eBay for scalper pricing. People are collecting pantries full of the things. Like, look, look at all these cups. What do you need all these cups for? What? How many mouths do you have? And all of this craze and excitement over these cups has left a lot of people wondering, why, why, how come? It's just cups, right? Like it just holds liquid. Like, are we, is it a hockey thing? It's not a hot, it's it's cups, like liquid holding, okay. I, I don't get it. Well, let me help you out. I have now spent days of my life researching these cups and what's made them so successful. And I can definitively say now, I get it. It's still not necessarily a product that excites me, but I do understand where the hype comes from. So buckle up, we're taking a deep dive. So Stanley is an old brand, it's over 100 years old. It was founded in 1913 by William Stanley Jr. And Stanley was an electrician. And as a result of his work with transformers, he discovered a welding process that could be used to create vacuum insulated bottles out of steel instead of glass. So he founds the Stanley Bottle Company, although he wasn't a part of it for very long. He died in 1916 at the age of 57. So only three years after the company was founded. Fun fact though, his son, Harold Stanley, he went on to found the financial firm Morgan Stanley with JP Morgan's grandson, which is also a brand that still exists to this day. Okay, so that's the initial selling point of a Stanley bottle. It's made of steel instead of glass, so it's more durable. So given that main selling point, it was mainly marketed towards like blue collar working men. Just look at these hard working fellas on the construction site. You think a glass bottle's gonna survive that drop? No. As time went on, Stanley bottles also started being marketed towards outdoorsmen, like people into camping and stuff, but still very much focused on men. I mean, just look at this imagery. Clearly, this is a bottle made for dude lips only. So in 2016, Stanley introduces a new product into the lineup called the Adventure Vacuum Quencher. And this cup is an earlier iteration of the cup that everybody's so crazy about today. It's a very similar shape actually to their original 1913 bottle, but they took it and they gave it a whoop, flipped it right on its head so that the tapered end is at the bottom. And they gave it a whoop, one of these. That way with the taper at the bottom, it can still hold a lot of liquid while also being able to fit into like a car cup holder. Plus it's got the handle for convenient carrying. But when they first dropped this product into their lineup in 2016, this was still before the big shift. So this was being marketed towards outdoorsy men. And it came in exciting colors such as black, stainless steel, uh... It was very much not trying to be the cup that it is today, dominated by the girly market. Okay, so in November of 2017, The Buy Guide posts about the quencher. It's their second ever post on Instagram. The Buy Guide was founded by these three ladies. It's like an influencer marketing type account that highlights products and makes money from affiliate programs and things like that, kind of similar to Wirecutter. So Buy Guide posts about the cup. They like the cup and they see the cup as more than just a camping tool. They see it as like an everyday carry item that will resonate well with their core audience of mainly women. But at this point in time, the cup had not been doing very well for Stanley and they'd kind of already filed it away under dumb, stupid failures. They were keeping very low stock of it. They weren't really promoting it anymore. And eventually they just discontinued it. And so the ladies over at the buy guide were like, no, don't. You're making a mistake. So buy guide tries to reach out to the Stanley company, but they're not getting a response. At this point in time, Stanley is still being run by the old guard of green thermoses. So they're not particularly active on social media. They're not really checking DMs. Plus it was the buy guide, which was this influencer marketing newfangled thing. And buy guide was still pretty small at that time. So Stanley probably wouldn't have been interested even if they did see the messages. So that's it. End of story. Quencher is discontinued forever. Except that's not what happened at all. So buy guide sends a quencher cup to Emily Maynard, who is a TV personality famous for being on The Bachelor. And Emily posts about the cup and the buy guide in her Instagram story. And that catches the attention of somebody over at Stanley. So now Buy Guide has an in, they have a contact over at Stanley. So the Buy Guide ladies buy 5,000 quencher cups wholesale from Stanley to sell to their own followers. And they sold all 5,000 in five days, which is way more volume than Stanley had ever seen selling the cups on their own. So this strengthens the relationship between Buy Guide and Stanley. And now Stanley starts taking some of the advice coming from the Buy Guide team. Things like, hey, maybe you should get an affiliate program going. Maybe you should make your website a little better and more modern. 
which by the way, when I was researching for this video, I was in the internet archives looking at old versions of Stanley's website. Do you remember when websites could just play unsolicited noises at you and that was just like accepted? Like nobody went to jail? Cause Stanley remembers. Also, thank goodness, finally, a corporation that isn't afraid to come out and openly support child fishermen. And in 2010 too, so ahead of their time. Anyways, we need to pause the story here and talk about the logo. So this is the current Stanley logo. It's a mythical bear with a crown and wings. He's referred to as Stan and he's adorable. We stand, Stan. Now the quencher that is popular today is a second iteration of the original quencher. It's the quencher H 2.0, get it? It's a reference to water. So here's the OG quencher and here's the quencher 2.0. What do you notice? The One's color. Pink. Different colors, yes, good. Handles yeah, the handle's a little thicker and the bear. There's no bear. Where's my boy? So this logo is not an OG logo. It is not a hundred plus years old like the brand itself. It's not even 10 years old. No, Stan the Bear was introduced in 2018. Well, this press release blog post thing from Stanley would have you believe that he was introduced in 2019, but that's just because they want you to forget the first iteration that was out in 2018. I mean, gosh, so close, but so far. Why does he look like he's gonna maul somebody? Why is he so violent? This version of the logo did not last very long. And I think this is really where you can see the turning point happen. I think somebody internally saw this new logo and was like, guys, what are we doing? We're scaring off all the bitches. We got bitches just chomping at the bit, trying to give us money. And we're scaring them off with our spooky guard bears. Apparently they went with a bear because they were marketing their cups towards campers and campers would always like give them bear stories from when they were out camping. I will point out that the original Stan, AKA Violent Stan did have lightning bolts in his crown as a homage to Stanley's original like electrical background, which was pretty cool, but overall new version, much improved. Violent Scary Mythical Bear, that's gonna be a no-go for the girly community. But this cute little fella, come on, that's gonna be a two thumbs up. Okay, so in May 2020, Stanley hires ex-Crocs chief marketing officer, Terrence Riley, to be the new Stanley president. Terrence played a major part in reviving the Crocs brand and helping it shed its old identity as like a sad shoe that single dads wear with socks. It's no longer a joke of a brand. You know, when I joined as the CMO, the meme was those holes are where your dignity leaks out. And Stanley was hoping that he could do a similar thing for them. So one trick that Terrence has up his sleeve that he used at Crocs and used again over at Stanley is collabs. For example, at Crocs, they did a collab with Post Malone, somebody who was cool with the younger crowd that they were aiming for and was also already organically talking about Crocs anyways. So Stanley has now done collaborations with Starbucks and country singer Lainey Wilson, both of which are popular with the girlies. Terrence also introduced a lot of new colors to the Stanley Quencher lineup, particularly lots of pastel colors, cause those are popular with the girlies. Terrence really seemed to understand that this was already more than a cup. It, it was an accessory. It's something that you carry around with you all day. Even if you're not going anywhere, people can see you drink from it on the Zoom meetings. You can't be drinking out of an ugly cup on the Zoom meetings. The cups are essentially an article of clothing. Like you wear this thing. Countless TikTok videos of, you know, fit check. Here's my Stanley before they're even talking about their fit. So in addition to the collabs and the new colors, Terrence also spearheaded a huge push into influencer centric marketing and social media marketing. So the cup started blowing up real big on a certain platform, tends to do well with the girlies. Can you guess which one? It's TikTok. <laughs> The Cups did well on TikTok and Stanley put in a real effort to build that relationship with the TikTok community. And in addition to the collabs and the new colors, Stanley also started doing limited edition drops, which really helps drive that, you know, shiny new thing feeling. Even if you already have a cup, now you see this new limited edition one. And there's also a certain scarcity mindset and the fact that it is limited edition and it all just starts coming together. It's just really funny to me to picture like the old guard at Stanley, or, you know, the old leadership, just kind of watching the brand that has historically been so rough and male dominated slowly become this, you know, friend for the girlies, just girly things. Uh, it must've been devastating. Some of the old school Stanley people had a very difficult time with the idea of a pastel colored cup. It just sort of felt like we are going against everything that their brand identity stood for. That happens. And certainly that's something that I experienced right away at Stanley. There were people that 
didn't believe that pink was a Stanley color. And you'd be surprised to know what one of our top selling colors is today. Anyways, all of the success is helping Stanley pump their online sales, which is now helping them get into retailers like Target. And then that allowed our talented team to go talk and knock on the doors of people that were returning our calls before, some of America's premier retailers. So now they're blowing up on TikTok. They've become this kind of trendy, collectible item. They've become the thing that everybody has, all the influencers that you follow have, all the other kids at school have. Plus now, they're at REI, they're at Target. So now things are really starting to gain momentum. And then something happens that accelerates it so much faster. In November of 2023, a video from TikTok user Danny Marie Lettering goes viral. Her car caught on fire, she was okay, but her Stanley Cup was inside of the car when it was on fire, and the Stanley Cup survived. Not only did it survive, but it still had ice inside of it. So Stanley, since they now have a big social media presence, they catch wind of this very quickly. And they respond to this video within like 24 hours, and they do the best thing they could possibly do in the situation. They send Danielle some Stanley Cups, and they replace her car. And this is announced publicly via the official Stanley brand TikTok with a stitch featuring our boy, Terrence Riley. Hey Danielle, my name is Terrence Riley. I'm the president of Stanley, and we're all really glad you're safe. Thanks for sharing the video because, wow, it really shows how Stanley, our Stanleys are built for life. Well, we're gonna send you some Stanleys, but there's one more thing. We'd love to replace your vehicle. And this is a super nice thing to do. And it's also a really great PR and marketing move. You know, like it's sweet, it's very nice. And it's a publicity stunt, like it can be both, and it is. You know, interestingly enough, in my research for this video, I found that this is actually not the first time that surviving a vehicular accident has been part of a Stanley marketing push. Motorcycle was totaled, the deer died, but my Stanley bottle, she lives on. The only difference is that this is a small block of 0.12 text on a print ad, and this is a viral video with nearly 100 million views. So this video and the response from Stanley, this really pushed things over the top. This is why everybody is talking about Stanley Cups right now. So Stanley has had about a 10X in revenue from 75 million in 2019 to now 750 million in 2023. But why, why did that happen? Like it's, it's a quality cup from what I can tell, I don't own one, but it seems like a good cup, but it is just a cup. It did not blow up to this extent simply for being a good cup. The successful influencer marketing and it blowing up on TikTok made it just a, a cool thing to own. The new colors made it more interesting to the demographic of women they were now aiming for. Plus it fed into helping make it sort of a, a collectible. So did the collaborations and the limited editions. Those things also created scarcity, which creates more excitement. And this is not the first time that water bottles specifically have been this trendy thing. Before Stanley Cups, it was hydro flasks. And before hydro flasks, it was those Nalgene bottles. Because, I mean, it does promote this habit of drinking water throughout the day that most people would regard as a healthy habit. But to do that, you've got to carry this thing around with you, which makes it an accessory. It makes it part of you and your expression of yourself. So people don't want it to just be any old thing. They want it to be a very personal thing or the cool thing. We've all experienced this, right? Like just because you're not into Stanley Cups doesn't mean you haven't experienced this sort of thing before. You've been into something that was just a blank, but it was the very special cool blank that everybody was into at the time. To say that a Stanley Cup is just a cup is to say that these are just pieces of cardboard and these are just children's toys and this was just a rubber band. Yes, but also no. A combination of good marketing and good decision-making from the companies along with a lot of good luck for these companies has led to these things having a greater cultural significance. All right, so now we're getting kind of into the speculation portion of the video. I think that whole viral car fire video thing was both the best and worst thing that could have happened to Stanley because that video really pushed the, the public awareness of this Stanley trend in general to critical mass. There's been new segments about it. A lot of people who were previously not aware or just peripherally aware of Stanley as a thing are now very aware of it. And the popularity of Stanley Cups are very driven by youth culture, and Stanley knows this. Youth culture drives culture, and 
Now more than ever before, female youth culture drives culture. But now the demographic of people interested in Stanley Cups is expanding on both ends of the spectrum. It's getting both older on this side and younger on this side, which is gonna make it much less cool for the teenagers and young adults in the middle. Now your grandma's gonna be asking you, what's the deal with these Stanley Cups? Should I get one? And that's, that's usually the nail in the coffin for a trend. And trend cycles in general have been getting shorter and shorter. Now it's still a little early to tell as I'm making this video, but I think we're at the peak and we're about to see a big decline in the popularity of Stanley Cups. Maybe not, there are some very smart people over at Stanley who are of course going to be working to avoid that. So maybe they'll be able to extend the trend cycle a little longer, but no matter what, it's not gonna stay at this peak level of hype forever. I just don't think that the force of trend cycles is a force that can be completely stopped. I'm not saying Stanley as a company is going anywhere and like nobody's gonna have these things anymore. That's not true. The company's been around over a hundred years. I don't think it's dying now. And hey, the cool thing about a trend being something practical like an insulated cup is that even when the trend dies down, you still have a perfectly functional insulated cup. Hooray! I actually find the story of the Stanley quencher a little bit unsettling. It's something I already like knew about the world, but it's still just unsettling to see such a clear example of how subtle the difference can be between a huge total flop and a giant sensational success. This cup and this cup are not that different, but one of them was a total failure and one of them 10 x the company's revenue. And it was really the subtleties that made the difference. I guess, I don't know, it feeds an anxiety I have as somebody who like makes content on the internet. So you put something out and you're like, you're confident that it's a quality thing, but then it doesn't do that well. And you just can't help but wonder, maybe if I had a different thumbnail, a different title, some little subtle editing tweaks that this would suddenly be a video with millions of views. Because the original Quencher also seemed like a high quality product, but not that many people cared, except for some people over at the Buy Guide, which Stanley wasn't interested in at first. So I guess the lesson here is do quality work, but don't get so tied to the old way of doing things and a certain identity that you've built for yourself that you become blind to opportunities that are surrounding you. Pretty profound for a video about a cup, huh? Anyways, that's all I got. Like and subscribe. Bye.